Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I have a tragic story for you guys, but I actually believe that we could turn tragedy into something amazing. And the reason why it's tragic is because uh, many animals just lost their lives. And even though animals lose their lives every day, um, I gotta be honest with you, you can obviously tell from the background, I'm talking about bees, 5 million bees to be exact, were just, just died because they were sent to the wrong location and died on a very hot tarmac uh, off loaded off of a plane after they took they took a, a shipment of bees that were supposed to go from Sacramento to Alaska and I, and I accidentally went to Atlanta. And we're gonna go over those stories and then we're gonna talk about something that everyone can do. And it's something that I've quite frankly been fascinated by for years and that is uh, to start a bee colony because quite frankly, the numbers are staggering. Over the last 50 years, our uh, bee colonies have been collapsing uh, very steadily over the years worldwide. Now, in the last few years, actually, since 2019, and this is something that I've really been involved with because I love growing food, I love uh, growing uh, trees and all of that, and I love sustainability. Sustainability is so vital. And what people don't realize is that the bees are so vital to our food supply. I remember hearing a statistic once that it takes like half of the nation's bees to pollinate just the almonds that come out of California. It is absolutely staggering. And bees, most people don't understand this, but bee uh, hives are actually shipped all over the United States for specific pollination purposes. Um, uh, and there's a lot of money to be made too. So this may be something that not only you get into in your hobby, and at the end, I'm gonna show you something so simple, it's insane to be able to help this cause. But after a while, you might go, oh my gosh, I might have myself a viable business and beekeepers do make a good amount of money. And if you're into this hobby, please click into the comment section and let us know below uh, what you like or what you don't like about it. Just let us know some pros and cons. I really like the chatter that goes on in the comment section, all right? So here we go, we're gonna share the screen we're going to talk about this. So the story came out a few days ago, uh, and it's a uh, 5 million honeybees die at Atlanta airport. Delta apologizes for the unfortunate situation. So what happened is about 5 million honeybees bound for Alaska last weekend got waylaid when Delta Airlines routed them through Atlanta, where most of the bees died after being left for hours in crates on the ground during hot weather. The bees were the first of two shipments ordered by Alaska beekeeper Sarah McElra from a distributor in California. The bees were to be used to pollinate apple orchards and nurseries in Alaska, where they are not native. Okay, so okay, I want to go over this very uh, clearly again. And and man, my heart goes out to Sarah because it's hard to get these shipments of bees. I do know that, you know, in a timely manner. So she's needing these bees up in Alaska to pollinate her apple orchards and more than that in a very timely and important time when uh the 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 blossoms are starting to blossom and uh and they need the bees to do this very vital critical role. It says but the bees were bumped from the original route to Anchorage, Alaska, and instead put on a flight to Atlanta, where they were to be transferred to an Anchorage-bound plane, according to published reports. McElra said she worried when the 800-pound shipment didn't arrive in Atlanta in time to make the connecting flight. The next day, she said, Delta told her some bees had escaped, so airline workers put the crates holding the bees outside a Delta cargo bay. 5 million bees. That is absolutely horrible. I saw this story, which I thought was really interesting, which was great too, because the bee community is actually, and please again, put in the comment section if you're part of this, the bee community is actually very small and very tight uh, nationwide. And even though you think, well, that's Alaska, this doesn't affect me, it does because that food that's grown in Alaska is not only for people in Alaska, but people all over the country and the world, all right? And the world is having a bee problem. We're going to talk about that too real quick. But uh, this is a great story that I heard right here. Year. Edward Morgan was having a relaxing Sunday at his home near Atlanta when a frantic call came in from a beekeeper in Alaska. I bet, yeah, gosh, man, it's it sounds funny because it's, it's you say it's just bees, right? But I hate it when animals died for no reason. And and when you think about how important a bee is, a honeybee or any bee actually to pollinate our nation's food supply, this is is horribly tragic. Um, so we got the call about the five million honeybees. Um, and Morgan, a hobby beekeeper who lives in uh, Marietta and is a member of the Metro Atlanta Beekeepers Association, said he heard the panic in Sarah's voice and knew he had to hurry over that day, April 24th. 
the 200 packages of bees she had ordered for a business were supposed to be sent to Sacramento from Sacramento to Seattle. Instead, because there wasn't enough room in the cargo hold for the bees, which honestly should have taken priority. These are live animals. Uh, Delta Airlines said that the sent the shipment to Georgia to be placed on a larger plane that would then fly to Alaska. And honestly, guys, we're dealing with people that that aren't there on scene. I, I, don't, I don't blame Delta in this kind of situation. This is life, right? This is what really happens. But we need desperately to up these B numbers. Um, here, I'm going to move on. Sorry. Um, all right. We're going to talk about this. Decline in bee populations pose a threat to global food security and nutrition. Now, this story came out in 2019. But and, and they have, again, picked up colonies have picked up in the last couple of years. But I'm telling you, we are definitely not out of the woods. And with with situations like this, we need ever so more. We need more uh, bee colonies uh, out out there in the open. And again, you could make some good money. It says the global decline in bee populations pose a serious threat to a wide variety of plants critical to human well-being and livelihoods. And countries should do more to safeguard our key ally key allies in the fight against hunger and, and malnutrition. I'm just going to read this one uh, paragraph and then we're going to talk about what you guys can do. Bees and other pollinators are declining in abundance in many parts of the world, largely due to intensive farming practices, monocropping, excessive use of agricultural chemicals, and higher temperatures associated with climate change, affecting not only crop yields, but also nutrition. If this trend continues, nutritious crops such as fruits, nuts, and many vegetables will be substituted increasingly by staple crops like rice, corn, and potatoes, eventually resulting in an imbalanced diet. Guys, remember, rice, corn, and potatoes do not need pollinization, whereas uh, many fruits and vegetables and nuts, well, all fruits, they, they need it. All right, this is what you can do. And it sounds so crazy, um, but build a bee, uh, a bee a habitat. And what people don't realize it is literally as easy as taking a bunch of uh, bamboo sticks and stuffing them into like a little house. It looks like a birdhouse. And what a lot of people do, and, and these bees absolutely love, they'll literally find these tiny holes and they just jump right in. I'm going to try and find a photo of one. And they dive right in and they start living there. And people have done all kinds of amazing little things with these. And I couldn't find a photo of them, but usually what people do is they'll take something like this and they'll build a tiny little planter box out in front with a, a plant that bees love to, uh, to pollinate, right? They love to get the, the nectar from or, or pollinate. So what I think is amazing is they, they build these little things. I couldn't find a photo of a really good one. And they put these or they'll, they'll build a little moss roof or somewhere you can keep moist. And the bee is first attracted to that plant. And then he checks around and goes, holy cow, look at this. I got like a mansion right here. I'm going to call my buddies. And what you're doing is you are providing a very safe place. Remember, a lot of bees, you know, they'll hide um, uh, inside rafters and houses and places that humans don't want. And what they do is people will, you know, kill them. Hopefully they call a qualified bee person and, and, and a, a bee, uh, uh, someone that raises bees and, and, and works with bees loves it because they can go and get the queen and move the entire colony. Right. And it's actually very hard to find those opportunities. Whereas a lot of people will, uh, just exterminate the bee colony themselves when they get completely out of control. Um, around the house. And I, I just challenge you to, to look into this. And it's really amazing when, you know, when the bees see here, you see a bee cru cruising into one of these and going, Hey, what's going on here. And they start to fill up these holes and start to live there. And then your plants are healthier. Your garden looks amazing. And you're doing something amazing for this country. And honestly, the world, uh, it is very vital. You know, when we see things like this at homes, you know, people, they want to get rid of these and a lot of people take it into their own uh, hands and they'll kill it with uh, pesticides or things like that. And it is tr it's truly tragic. You know, not only is there stuff going on in the environment that are, are hurting the, uh, the bee populations, but also um, it's, it's humans that are doing it too. So more environmental, honestly, than humans, I believe. But this kind of stuff, I think, is absolutely a no-brainer. And as a matter of fact, I'm building one this spring with my kids for our yard because I just think it's absolutely amazing. And to me, I mean, look at this, this is something as simple as people taking uh, holes in logs and just drilling them out. I mean, it's absolutely unbelievable. This, 
I think takes the cake, to be honest with you, when you're talking about, you know, just really going big, this is something that I would personally like to have. So guys, I thank you so much for watching. Please put it in the comments, you know, your experiences with bees, what you think about what's going on. And I just wanted to get this story out because it has to do with our food uh, supply and our food supply is in very serious, serious situation. And it's way more than what happened in COVID. It's way more than a supply chain or more than a war with Russia. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes and, and we have to be prepared. All right, guys, that being said, I thank you so much for watching. The Economic Ninja is out.